So hey Sumi and anyone else that might be watching, I'll just uh, real quick go over a few uh, different rudiments. This, I'm just going off the post that I had. So um, this is just a drum throne, not using a snare or anything like that. I think it is, it's, it's good to practice on something that doesn't have like a really uniform bounce, like a, like a tight snare drum or a practice pad. Um, because, I mean, when you're hitting, your, your cymbals are going to be rigid, your snare is going to have, you know, kind of a nice bounce to it, your toms tend to be a little bit looser, so every, every surface is a little bit different. There's a lot of instructors that like to, you know, think of, you know, using nothing but rebound when you play, but, you know, that honestly only works for, like, like jazz tunings, where, where everything is just, like, super tight on the kit. If you're playing more like kind of rock stuff or things, you know, you're going to have to kind of generate a lot of this stroke yourself. Now, it's not to say that you're not using the rebound, the natural rebound of the stick at all. You do want to use that, but you have to make sure that you generate each stroke cleanly. And that's what I'm going to focus on with this. So basically, if you're starting with single strokes, um, you know, instead of thinking of hitting the drum, you do want to let it kind of, you know, come off. And even on this little goofy throne, there is still a little bit of rebound that's coming up. So if you start evenly, just make sure that you're watching your hands. Okay. And then I want to comment a whole lot on grip, like where you're holding the sticks and things like that. I mean, obviously, if you're too far forward, it's not going to work. If you're too far back, it's not going to work. It's got to be comfortable. And, you know, the fulcrum is very important. Where, where, where you're holding the stick is important. But, I mean, you could spend hours talking about that. So if it looks good and it feels good, you're probably okay. Um, the only thing, I guess, to watch out for is to make sure that you're not tense. Just make sure you're loose. Um, if you're fighting it, you'll feel it. You'll feel it in your wrists. You'll feel it in your elbows. And the stroke is generated. It doesn't matter if you're playing a single stroke or a double stroke or anything it's always going to come from the fingers and the wrist, okay? It's not going to be your elbows, it's not any of this stuff, okay? It really loose comes from your fingers. If I use just my fingers, you get something that kind of looks like this. You know, my arm, arms are pretty still. If I use just my wrist, you get something that looks like that. That's where, kind of where the powers come from. You can think of playing accents. If I play single strokes and just throw in some accents, What I'm doing is kind of, uh, kind of tightening on my wrist a little bit to kind of generate that. Now, if you ever have a question of whether or not you're doing that correctly, am I using my fingers and my wrist? It's really quite simple. Take the stroke, you know, whatever you're doing for a sticking, and just simply flip your stick over, play your arms like this, because you can't use your arms, you can't use your elbows when you're doing this. This is the same motion. This is the same thing I'm doing right here. It's right here. Okay? Just the sticks are going the opposite way. That's a really good way. I mean, you can sit there and do that while you're watching TV. Just work on singles, doubles, whatever. Okay? So, single strokes. I mean, it'll be interesting when I look and watch this and see how I'm doing. But, I mean, the, the goal is to, is to always have them equal. The stick height, that is. Have, have the sticks coming up at the same height. No matter what the tempo is, and of course, having it, you don't want any of this stuff. You want it to be like da 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 da. -da. And slowly add some speed. Okay, and you know you can practice this on anything. Practice on a snare drum. Here's a pillow. You know, there's no bounce to a pillow. It's just a good thing to practice on so you're generating the stroke. Anyway, double strokes. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. And the thing to watch out for double strokes, very important, is that you're not letting the stick bounce so you get like a kind of sloppy like... That's not a double stroke, okay? That's just slop. So right, right, left, left, right, right, left. The goal is to try to get it to sound like a single stroke. It's not going to on a, on a throne, but that's the challenge, I guess. 
that's a good practice. Uh, it's a good exercise to try to. Now, most people, once you you know, practice for a while, your doubles are usually going to be faster than your singles. Singles. It's just physics. If you are doing sort of one stroke and your fingers are doing the second stroke of the double be able to play it a little bit faster than having to generate each stroke like with a single. Okay? Just takes a little bit of practice to get there. But you know the, the thing with a double stroke is when a lot of people the trap that they fall into is when they start slow playing a double stroke and they go faster and they're like okay I want to go a little bit faster and all of a sudden they, they switch to this kind of thing. That's not what you do. So just start slow and build it from there. You're gonna want to generate each stroke. Show you a, a little way to work on that here in a second, but we'll come back to that. So, double stroke, open stroke. You can hear each one. That's kind of the key. You 